Hey there, Teacher Brianna here at Tiny Cabin Montessori. And today I'm going to be showing you the lesson on the intro to the golden beads. Now the golden beads are a beautiful material that the children are very attracted to. So they often really want to work with this. And this is something though that you have to introduce after they are fully comfortable with their quantity and symbol of one through 10. Now, what's interesting is that you don't go to your teens or to your tens after this. It goes right into the golden beads, which are essentially the decimal system. And I'll explain why we do that when I'm finished with the lesson. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the lesson and then I'll talk about why I did what I did. So here we go. This is one unit. This is one ten. 100, 1,000. And I should note that you would want the child to repeat the name after you say the name so that they can reinforce that in their mind. So on to the second period. Can you please point to 1,000? Can you please point to 100? Can you please point to 110? And can you point to one unit? Please hand me one unit. Can you please hand me one ten? Can you hand me one hundred? And can you hand me one thousand? What is this? One thousand. And what? is this 100 what is this 110 and what is this one unit 1000 100 110 one unit so some interesting things you might notice is this green felt mat so in montessori green is the color of mat so you don't necessarily have to tell the child that, but whenever they see this particular rug, they'll know that they're about ready to work with numbers. Also, <clears throat> you wanna refrain from saying things like 10 bar or 100 square or 1,000 cube because it's extra information that is really distracting from what we're trying to explain to them, which is the quantity and the name. We also wanna make sure that they're in order of, we start with the smallest and with the largest, and then it's all going left to right. Same thing, even though we're doing math, we are kind of preparing the brain for reading, which is left to right. So once the child has fully understood this and they've worked with the materials, you can introduce the symbol cards. So you would essentially give the lesson the same way you did, but by introducing the cards, you're letting them know that they are both the same. They are interchangeable. One is a physical form, one is a symbol. So here's how you do it. This is one unit. This is also one unit. This is 110. This is also 110. This is 100, and this is also 100. This is 1,000, and this is also 1,000. Now, this is obviously a floor work, and you wanna make sure that you're giving the lesson to the child who's sitting next to you, because if they're in front of you, it can get a little confusing as far as them fully grasping which direction to go. They won't get the full effect of the lesson, and if you're sitting together, then you're both looking at it from the same place. So after they've worked with this and you've done the lesson, you can start playing games, which I love these games. The first one, you would just kind of mix up the beads and you would hand them the cards and you would have them match the cards to the beads. And then they could work with it themselves. 10, 100, 
you'll find that often they want to mix up 100 and 1,000, which is totally normal. Just let them, give them the time and the space to find it. And if they mess up, be sure not to mention it. All right, so then once you've done this, then you can switch up and move the cards around, hand them the beads, and let them match the beads to the numbers. Here we go. So once the child is fully understanding their 1, 110, 100, 1000, then we can move on to the tray of nines, which is one of my favorite lessons. Thanks so much for joining us today. I can't wait to show you some more lessons. Please feel free to comment, ask questions, and subscribe below. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye.